Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is another in my series of low grade comics as an investment. So what I'm looking at in this series is some major, major grails, uh, but that are in low grade. So these are entry level books to major characters and comics that people want to collect. And the one that I'm going to show you today is actually something where there's a lot of uh, it's a character that there's a movie coming out with this character. There's a lot of talk about this character. And it's also still a blue chip comic. So it has best of both worlds where it's not only something that is um, a blue chip, but it's a blue chip in the works. So with that all said, let's take a look at this comic. It is Amazing Spider-Man number 15. Now, this is a major comic because it's the first appearance of Craven the Hunter. And there's going to be um, a movie featuring this character very soon. I'm not sure if there, there was some talk of a solo movie about this character. If you're probably watching this at a later date, that movie's probably already out. Uh, and this character has real potential to become very hot, a hot character because it's, you know, kind of a cool character already. He already has a fan base, very well established character, but it's one of those characters that um, more people could know about after a movie comes out and more collectors could be introduced into the market. So it is one that is a blue chip and it's definitely one that has some room to grow. So with all that said, um, this is a low grade. <laughs> it's still a pricey book, even in a low grade. I forget what I paid for this. I think it was like two, three hundred dollars, even in this grade. I, 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 I might be mistaken. I have to check my numbers, but something like that. It was so um, pretty pricey book, um, even in a low grade. But that's the kind of price range that you can get into some of these major keys like that, you know, under a thousand generally, um, which is, you know, as an investment, that's a reasonable amount to be investing. So with that all said, let's see how well this book performed as an investment. Okay. So I'm going to switch my screen and we're going to look at uh, the go collect census. So we got Amazing Spider-Man number 15, first appearance of Craven the Hunter. And you'll notice that um, there hasn't been a recent sale of a high, high grade. I imagine this number might go up. So generally, these when people think of investment books, they think of this 9-8 level. And I actually believe that there is probably some growth, but there just hasn't been any comic recently that is of this high grade that hit the market. But I believe that this number could spike uh, if there was a comic of that grade. But let's look at the low grades. So as you see, it kind of gets a lot cheaper. Um, I might have paid more. I got to remember the numbers. I think I paid more. I think I paid closer, maybe four or 500 actually, thinking about it. Because it, when, seeing these numbers, I, I think that's probably what I paid. But <laughs> it's something in that range. Um, so you'll notice that, um, mine is a two O and two O's, the fair market value, uh, is 575. Now I imagine if you check eBay, you'll probably see them listed at a much higher price than that. But generally what people are doing is they're taking the fair market value and adding a little bit of percentage to it. So these numbers are what have you know, based on past sales, they determined that fair market value to be, but it doesn't necessarily reflect what you'll see on eBay. And eBay is generally a little bit overpriced. So just so you are aware of that. But, uh, you know, you can see, you know, the prices are fairly, fairly well spread. And there's been a fair number of recent sales, except for a 1.0, uh, which hasn't sold recently. But a lot of recent sales, like, you know, you see February, March, you know, these are all fairly recent. So you can actually gauge fairly accurately how, how well these grades kind of perform. So let's take a look deeper into these numbers. So I'm going to dive deeper and then we'll look. 
So you'll notice the high grades, except for these eight fives. These eight fives always seem to do quite well, in my opinion. Um, so 9.0, a little bit of an increase. 8.5, huge increase. Uh, th you know, 8.0, good increase. 6.5 down, but you know, it could have been a high sale that just didn't, you know, didn't uh, hold out. <laughs> so there's a little bit of loss there. Um, and then you get mine. Oh my goodness, mine a little bit down, 2.6%. And that, you know, that happens. So um, I actually pay, you know, I, I believe I paid less than uh, what the, the, the go fair market rate is. So probably I got a little bit of an increase, but uh, yeah, they're saying, showing a little bit of a decrease. But you'll notice the 3.0, 78.6%. The 2.5, 5, 23.6%. So there's a lot of growth there in these, in these low grades. And this 2.0, sure. So uh, with investing, um, you have to see it as whether you're going to take a long. Flip this book, I'm going to lose because, well, it's gone down 2.6% based on these numbers. And and that would be a mistake. So generally, you got to pick your battles. Do you want to go for a long-term investment or a short-term investment? Now, with comics, generally, some of the big things that influence the price is uh, movie speculation or um, a movie actually getting released. It'll, you know, depending if the movie does really, really well, well, that comic can become really, really pricey. And if it doesn't do well, then that comic can become like really drop in value. Um, there's usually um, a situation where uh, people like they speculate a lot that, you know, there's a lot of curiosity, especially if a trailer drops, you'll notice that the price will kind of climb. And what you can do is if you're, if you're using this as an investment, you can decide that that is the moment you want to sell because when there's that trailer or some people are talking about it and that, little bit of hype, that's kind of a good time to sell and you'll get a little bit of a price boost. Now you might be wrong in that assumption that that was the best point to sell because you, you always want to sell at the top of the market. And it could be that the once the movie comes out, that character becomes super hot and then maybe make a string of movies all about that character because he's super hot. And then that comic goes through the, through the roof in terms of pricing. And, you know, that's the gamble that we, we make when we invest in comics, whether or not the comic will or the character will be hot today or and not hot in the future. Uh, so one of the things that I look at when I see comics as an investment is to look at to look at comics in the way that um, uh, these are, I want established characters, characters that are like popular 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and that I think will be popular 20, 30 years from now. So I, I look at that long-term investment and I also look at the short term as well. So it could be the case uh, that if these are established comics, so so this, this is what I'm getting, kind of getting with on this. Um, for example, let's say, take this book, okay? Movie's coming out, hype, everyone's excited about it. Now, I could try to flip it, but if I don't, like, let's say, for some reason, I don't sell it. Was it a good investment still? Or am I really dependent on the hype to make this a good book? Well, I want to play both best of both worlds. So best situation is that uh, it's a character that I know is going to be popular 20 years from now and, you know, all the way through that point, um, but also has some hype now. So this is kind of like the situation with this Craven character, because he's, it's a character that, you know, it's like this comic is from 1964. <laughs> you know, it's a, a 60 year old comic and it's, you know, an established character. 
well, he's going to be probably, you know, reasonably popular for another 20, 30, 40 years or more. You know, he's an established character. So I know that it's a good long-term investment for that reason. And then there will be a gradual increase, maybe not the huge spike that you would see during a movie or whatever, but it has that established, you know, character. If, you know, so that's the long-term investment on it. Now, the short-term investment is like, oh, oh, a movie's coming out and the movie does well or has a trailer that pops and I take advantage of that moment and sell it and just say, hey, look, I want to get my money out, sell it at that moment. So I, I, the great thing about picking these kind of blue chips that are kind of established character is you can play both, both games, the long game and the short game because there's always gonna be a movie about these kind of characters. It's like Spider-Man. Spider-Man is one of those comics where, you know, Spider-Man number one, you know, every time a new Spider-Man com movie comes out, well, that book is gonna spike a little bit. And, uh, you know, it might get, you know, a little bit fade after that, but, uh, you know, it will generally still go up over time. So you can play both games, the long and short. And that's really what I'm trying to show in these, this video right now, is that these kind of characters, you can play that long and short game. And there's very few investments in life that give you that opportunity to play both games, the long and short game within, invest, within your investment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I, you know, I was getting a little bit into the philosophy of investing, but for many collectors, Comics are an investment and it's a very big investment, especially, you know, you're spending a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars on a comic. It's a pretty major investment. So I hope you enjoy this video. Check out my others in the series and thanks for watching. Bye.